Rennie K. Stein, Mad Scientist, Fantastic Voyage, Jim Benton. Chapter 1, Rennie's House. The Stein family lived in the pretty pink house with the lovely purple shutters down at the end of Death Street. Everything about the house was bright and cheery. Everything, that is, except the upstairs bedroom with a tiny round window. Behind this window was Franny's room, which was also her laboratory. Even for a mad scientist, Franny's lab was unusual. Her experiments and inventions are far beyond those of your average, everyday mad scientist. In fact, Fanny's work was so complicated that she found she could not do it uh, not do it alone. She had a lab assistant named Igor. Well, he wasn't a pure lab. He was also part Poodle, part Chihuahua, part Beaker, part Spaniard, part Shepherd, and possibly part some kind of Weasley thing that probably wasn't even a dog. Fanny had been th- 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 Throw a lot, a lot with Igor, and she, he had learned a great deal about math science working with Franny in her laboratory. But Igor was still awfully young, and Franny was still nervous about letting him work on any of the, any of the more dangerous projects. Chapter two. Franny loses her face. Franny remembered the time that he, she was working on a device that would make bite-sized jelly donuts with the press of a button. But Igor got the dimensions wrong, and she wound up filling the entire school with jelly. Then there was a that. And there was the time Franny was trying to create a beautiful new kind of striped flower strip. A striped flower by adding the DNA from a tiger to an ordinary house plant, but Igor read the plants wrong, and the two of them were nearly eaten by a bouquet. And she could never forget when she invented the automatic face scrubber. Igor changed one of the settings, and it, and it pulled Fan- Fanny's face right off. Luckily, Fanny was pretty good at emergency surgery and managed to get her face reattached without too much trouble. Igor could be a real pest sometimes, and Fanny's upcoming project was going to be so dangerous that she just could not risk Igor messing things up. Fanny knew that there were people who handled pests every day. Pests like scorpions, termites, and very worst of all, her brother. Chapter 3 Mom Knows Pest Fanny could sneak a rabbit or a dog into the house without anybody hearing. She could raise a family of electric ear in the toilet without ever getting shocked. She could even make a clone T Rex ride, ride a unicycle. But she could not handle her brother, Freddy. Freddy noticed that, that Freddy never really bothered her mom. She could cook and read and change the oil in the car. And Freddy, Freddy never seemed to be in her way. Freddy just knew that if she tried to do any of those things, both Freddy and Igor would bug her like crazy. Franny wondered what sort of brilliant methods her mother was using to restrain Freddy. Perhaps she suspends him over a tank of bread-eating penguins, or encases him in a block of ice. This would, this would also control the odor. She might be using mummification, or pickling, or maybe she hides in Edda's glass and and Edda's glasses and tells her that Freddy is a small ugly chair. But Freddy's mom had had used an even simpler, more effective, and more diabolical restraining device than Freddy could ever have imagined. With just the press of the button, this gadget kept Freddy totally out of her way while she worked. Chapter 4 Tube Head 
Rennie's mom pressed the button on the remote control, and the television came on. Freddy stopped in mid-step and slumped down on the floor in front of it. Freddy was fascinated. Fascinated. Freddy was transfixed by the screen. It's like he's hidden tight, she said. She moved. She waved her hand in front of his face, and he did nothing. Freddy left and came back with a few things from her lap. She waved a black widow spider, a vampire bat, and a cobra in front of his face, and still he did nothing but stare at the TV. Brandy began to grin. This may be what I need, she she said. And after looking through a book about electronics, she assembled the TV and remote control for a dog. Brandy set up the new television in front of Igor. I know that there's nothing you like better than helping me with my work, Igor," she said softly. "But give this a look and see if you might be willing to watch it once in a while when I need to need to work alone." Franny pressed the button on the remote control, and the TV came on. Igor slumped down in the floor and stared at it. She waved tarantulas, bones, and even a small monster she had recently made in front of Igor, and all he did was stare at the screen. Perfect," said Franny. "This is perfect." Chapter five. Doggy see, doggy do. Okay, maybe it wasn't exactly perfect. The TV, the TV kept Igor occupied, but it seemed to have another strange effect on him. If he saw a commercial burst bubblegum, he started chewing some right away. If he saw a show about a boat, he pretended to be a sailor. If he saw a movie about a king, he started behaving like one. He wanted all the things he saw on TV, even if he had no idea why he would ever want them. Once he saw a commercial for soda fifteen times in the same day, and he drank so much that his burps kept Franny and everything else in the lab awake all night. Franny knew that the TV was the real problem, but it kept Igor out of the way, so she decided not decided to just make no burping noise and let him keep watching it. At least she let him. Let him watch it until he completed the doomsday device. Chapter six. Happy doomsday to you. Over the last year or so, Franny had begun to realize that the things in her life could do terrible things if they ever fell into the wrong hands. She worried about some evil secret government department stealing her permanent wave machine and threatening everybody on Earth with incredibly dumb-looking hairdos. Or what if a cruel alien life form got a hold of her design for the Piranha Trike? Piranha could overrun the world in no time. And she imagined that an evil mad scientist could discover her plan for remote control underpants. With this te- with this te- technology, he could give the entire world a gigantic mass wedgie. So, in order to protect humanity from this and countless other creation, she completed her work on the doomsday device. Even though it was not, it was not bigger than a gumball. It was probably the single most powerful explosive ever created. If it ever looked like her technology was about to fall into the long hands, Franny could set the timer on the device and blow up her lab, protecting the world from world from all of her inventions. What what would be left of the world anyway? Chapter Seven. That's a little tough to swallow. Franny had put in a long day completing the doomsday device, and she was sleeping very soundly, dreaming the kind of dream that mad scientists always seem to dream. 
Suddenly, Igor, who was in a terrible panic about something, shook Fanny awake. He had drawn spaceships shooting laser. And written the words "alien invasion" in a piece of paper. He waggled it at Fanny and pointed frantically towards the sky. Fanny, still groggy, staggered to her feet and stumbled to the special seat that where she kept the doomsday device. It's a good thing I completed in time, she said. I'll just set it down here in case we need to use it. She placed the device on the table and went to her telescope. Franny scanned the sky. I don't see them yet, she said. I wonder if they're planning some sort of sneak, sort of a sneak attack. She looked over at Igor, who was sitting on a chair watching TV, snacking on grapes. Her eyes narrowed. Igor, you certainly look calm for somebody who is expecting an alien invasion. Igor did not look up from the television. Fanny looked back at the TV. There are no spaceships, no laser beams, and no aliens. Igor, where exactly do you see the aliens coming to invade the Earth? Igor pointed at the TV. It was a movie about aliens invading Earth. Fanny was stunned for a moment. A movie, she said. Igor looked up from the TV this time. You saw it in a movie. Fanny began to shout. A movie? Do you have any idea the danger you put us all in because you saw some people in rubber alien costumes? I was even getting ready to deactivate the doomsday. De-. Fanny stopped in, stopped yelling in mid sentence. She pointed at the TV. Where's the doomsday device? I set it on the table, right there, next to your plate of grapes. Igor shrugged his shoulders and tried to smile, the kind kind of t- smile you smile when you know you've done something wrong, but you're you're hoping that nobody can tell. Franny knew the smile. She has used it herself many times. Franny grabbed Igor and set him down in her, in front of her X-ray machine. She could see the doomsday device in his stomach. I knew it. You ate it. You couldn't even take your eyes off the TV long enough to make sure that you're eating a grape and not a bomb. She quickly pulled her stethoscope from the drawer and listened to his sum- stomach. She heard it ticking. You activated. You must have bitten down the button and started the timer. I don't know how to tell you this exactly, Igor, but let ju- let's just say that in less than an hour, it might be raining kibber all over the world. Chapter eight. Igor, you're the bomb. Franny had to think fast. She really don't have that many options when your dog swallows a horrifically devastating explosive, and you only have sixty minutes to act. Ask, ask somebody who has been in that situation; they will tell you the same thing. Franny made some notes and considered the various choices. I could put Igor in the rocket and shoot him to the moon, but the blast would destroy the moon. I could encase Igor in a giant concrete block, but the but the explosion will be too much too powerful to contain. I could perform emergency surgery. That one of the tools could make the bomb go off. There's really only one conclusion. I'm going in. Chapter nine. It's not it's not something you want to do. Franny began putting it on a special suit. This will protect me from the various horrible juices inside the dock. Igor scowled. No hard feelings, Igor. But if you think you、uh, stick in, stick on the outside, take a whiff of one of your disgusting, disgusting bur- dog barf sometimes. This is a fantastically unbe- unbelievable voyage I'm going on, but it's no pleasure cruising there. 
Igor smelled his own breath. He had to agree with Benny. He he was probably even worse on the inside. Here's my plan. First, I will use my tranquilizer to miniaturize my cell. Then I want you to carefully sniff me right up your nose. You are pointing at his mouth. No, not your mouth. I'm going in through your nose. I can't trust those those teeth of yours. You could accidentally bite me in half. E- Franny pointed at the chart of Igor's body. Once inside your nose, I will make my way way down your throat to your stomach. Igor, Igor handed her a fresh right. Good thinking, Igor. But my suit is glow in the dark, and that will light my way. When I, sh- when I get to your stomach, I'll find the device. Open it up and deactivate it. The screwdriver is all I need. Well, n- now, about getting back out, Franny began. Igor looked a little nervous. After I find the device and deactivate it, I'll call you on this walkie-talkie. Then you just lie down on your stomach. And that will make it easy for me to roll the device out like a big ball. I'll just walk right back out your nose. Igor nodded in agreement. Then I'll reverse the string rider with this remote control, enlarge my normal size, and everything will be back just fine. I'll also be able to watch you on this little screen on my wrist. Just to make sure you're okay throughout the procedure, you can even sit here and watch your dumb TV while you wait. Eager clapped his little paws together. Franny checked her watch. There were there were less than forty five minutes left. Everything seems to be in order, she said. What could go wrong? Chapter ten. Looking up an old friend. Franny pressed the button and stood in stood in front of the shrink rider. Igor watched as she shrank down to almost nothing. Igor gently crept it crept up and positioned his nose carefully. Franny looked on his his giant nose and braced herself. With one one giant snort, she. She was stuck up inside his tremendous nostril. Some people in her situation might get the willies. Some people might get the creeps. Some people might run home, back and jump in the bathtub, and never, ever, ever stop washing. But Franny didn't really mind walking around inside a dog's nose. It's kind of like a cave, she thought. A big slippery boogery cave. Her feet made sloppy squishy sounds as she trotted along, and she thought about how she might actually have had fun in there if she had more time. Chapter eleven. Let's get the sinus behind us. Franny stood stood at the edge of Igor's sinuses. Looking down to into his deep dark throat, it was important that she went down his esophagus, where she could wind up in one of his lungs. She checked her screen on her wrist and saw Igor staring at the television. A bomb was about to go off in his stomach, and a little girl was walking around his n- his nose and couldn't care about anything but the show he was watching. I never should him given should have given him the TV. Franny said. Franny said. Franny backed up a few steps to get a running start. She hurled herself off the edge and tumbled down Igor's throat. He was much stronger for than she had expected, and she re- realized that it was going to be a very long walk back out. Eventually, she landed with a thick, mucky splash in his stomach. 
and looking around, all she could think about was how truly lovely the inside of the dog's nose is when compared to the inside of his stomach. Chapter Twelve. Your stomach is bothering me. The contents of your stomach were truly a disgusting spectacle to behold. As Fanny floated, floated around in a vat of donuts, she saw grapes, pizza chunks, and bites of hot dog turning around in a sea of part, partly dis, disgusted, digested, digested gunk. The lactides of dog food drip gravely into the bite of bite, bite of chew toy and clumps of hair that bobbed around in the swirling current of covered up food. Freddy could see all sorts of odd things the eagle was ha- swallowed, including what the probably part of shoe race and a tiny foot of a plastic door. She couldn't see the doomsday device anywhere. She thought it might be below the surface. This one is a lot of neck, she said, just as a lot of neck brought it past. She checked her watch again and jumped in. Chapter 13 I think I got gum in my hair and everywhere else. Franny was running out of time. If she didn't find the device quickly, it would be the end of her and Igor and her lab and a gigantic chunk of planet Earth. Fanny thought, sometimes I wonder if I should just stop building this sort of horribly destructive things in the first place. Fanny laughed a little. Yeah, right, she said. And then she spotted it, the doomsday device, bobbing, bobbing next to a piece of, piece of peanut brittle. It had rolled it up to the surface and was ticking down the seconds un- until it would, it would explode. Franny swung towards it as fast as she could, paying no attention to the peculiar pink strand that swayed between her and the bomb. Just as she was about to grab the device, Franny found she could go no go no farther. She looked down and saw her legs are tangled in a sticky pink junk. She tried to free herself and got her hands stuck in it, stuck in it as well. The more she struggled, the worse she became untangled. Come, Franny said. That dog has that dog has been swallowing his bubble gum. Franny had been so close, but it looked like it was over. She was completely, completely ta- trapped by the gum, and time was running out. Wait a second, she said, and she wriggled her, her way over the peanut brittle. These edges are almost like broken glass. She dropped the strands of gums and. And down the edge of the peanut brittle, and began and began cutting and slicing until she was free. She grabbed the doomsday device and pulled out her screwdriver. You can't stop a mad scientist with a little gun, she said. Chapter fourteen. But you can't stop one with a little screwdriver. Franny smiled confidently. She hadn't hadn't expected the gum, and everything else was going according to plan. All I have to do now is lift this tiny, teeny little screwdriver into this great big screw, and then I can open that bomb and turn it off. Great big screw, teeny little screwdriver! Fatty gasped. God jokes! I miscalculated. The screwdriver is too small to open this screw. I can't get the device open before it explodes. Franny looked around Igor's stomach. If only there were something in here I could u- I could use. But Igor had to swallow the screwdriver. Yeah.
the walkie-talkie," Freddy said. "I was just her eager to swallow the screwdriver." She looked at her watch again. "But I've got to hurry. We're running out of time." Freddy pushed the button on the walkie-talkie. "Igor, can you hear me?" Igor. She looked at the small screen on her list. Igor was not responding. She, she he just kept staring at the television. Igor, can you hear me? Franny looked at her tiny, teeny, tiny screwdriver again, and she realized the second miscalculation she had made. My mouth, my vocal cords, my voice. They all got smaller. Of course, you can't hear me. My teensy voice is just too soft now. Franny sat down in a lump of what may have once been a pancake, gooey, yes, but actually kind of comfy. Let's see now. Trapped in dog's stomach, no way to radio for help. Bomb going off any minute. Even if Igor were to lie down on his own, I still could never lure the bomb out in time. Think, Franny. Think. Chapter Fifteen. Channel Surfing. Franny looked at her equipment. She had the screwdriver, her watch, and the remote control for the shrink rider. Yeah, the remote control. She said. Suddenly, grinning broadly, she quickly unscrewed the back, uh, unscrewed the back, and started making some adjustments. I made Igor's TV, the, Igor's TV, and its remote control. I should be able to rewire this one so that I can control the TV from here. Here. Franny looked at her screen, wrist screen, and pushed the button on the rewired remote control. She could see the channel change in Igor's television. Success! She shouted. Now watch carefully, you little tube head. She said. Franny started switching channels feverishly. She could see the channels fly past Igor's cage. She passed commercials for cars, toys, blue jeans, and hamburgers. Come on, come on, come on! She yelled, trying to save the world here. Finally, she, finally, she stopped in a commercial for corn chips. This is what I need, she said. Igor watched the commercial for a minute. For a minute, and then Franny saw him leave the room. It was a moment she was back. He was back, and the bag of corn chips. I knew he wanted them. Franny said. Franny saw a fragment of munched up corn chips start start tumbling into Igor's stomach. Perfect, exactly what I need. He said, she said, grabbing two t- triangular beads and tr- pulling them to one side. Now, hopefully, all the corn chips have made him thirsty. Igor watched Igor. Franny watched Igor on her little screen. He may have been thirsty, but he wasn't going anywhere. Franny could hear the doomsday device ticking down. Oh come on, Igor! Who doesn't get thirsty from corn chips? She yelled. I think he needs a little inspire inspiration. She said and started changing the channels again. He found the broadcast of a marathon with with tired hot runners racing down a scorching road. This should make him thirstier, she said. And Igor ran out of the room. She returned the. They turned a moment later, wearing running shoes and number on his chest. No, no, no! Franny yelled, and she changed the channels until she found a movie about some people lost in the desert. Look how thirsty they look. This will get him, get to him. Igor ran out of the room and returned with a sunscreen and a map of the de- desert. No, no, no! Franny yelled as she changed the channels until she found a science show about the sun. 
The surface of the sun is over ten thousand degrees Fahrenheit. The narrator explained, "This should do it," Fanny said, and watched as Igor ran out of the room. He returned a moment later with a glass of juice. "No, no, no!" Fanny shouted. "Juice doesn't work." She started, started, started clicking. Cooking through the channels feverishly, the fa- the fate of the world depended on Igor not drink not drinking the juice. Just then, she found what she was looking for. Yes, Fanny shouted. Igor stopped with the glass just inches from his mouth to have a look at the root beer commercial Fanny was what switched to. Fanny watched the kids pouring the sparkling cold root beer into tall glasses. His eyes widened until widen wire, widen wire. They enjoy big gulps of the deli- uh, big gulps of the delicious icy soda. He started to draw in his lap as they licked the delicious foam from their lips. He couldn't stand it any more. He ran from the room. He returned a moment later with a can of root beer. He plopped down on the floor and began drinking greedily. Fizzy root beer started pouring into Igor's stomach. Yahoo! Fanny yelled, "Success!" Chapter Fourteen Against Gastronomical Odds. Fanny started ticking, sticking her corn chips together with clumps of gum. The bubbles in the root beer were increasing the pressure up in Igor's stomach. She checked her watch. They are they are running out of time. Okay, Igor, let's have one of your big disgusting burps. She said, but Igor couldn't. He didn't burp. The pressure was building in her in his stomach, and he couldn't burp. Freddy remembered what she had told him. "Got jokes," she said. "Igor is trying to follow my lure. He's keeping himself from burping." Freddy started changing channels. "We'll see about that, Igor," she said. She found a music video with a with an irresistible beat. Igor started tapping on his foot. Fanny popped the back of her remote and made made a few little adjustments. Now she could control the volumes of Igor's TV, and she made the made the music louder. Igor's shoulders started to move a little in time to the music. Fanny started turn turned up the music a little more. Igor's tail started sway, th- started to sway back and forth. Fanny Howard, for the love of all humanity, shake what your mama gave you. Fanny increased the volume as loud as it would go, and Igor finally lost control.